This is actually under your budget. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you move in, Geico could help you save on renter's insurance. Yep, Geico helped me with renter's insurance, too. Um, the walls seem a bit thin. They are, and Craig practices the accordion every night. Says the guy who sings karaoke by himself. I'm a very shy singer. You're tone deaf! Yeah, shall we uh, move on to the next one? It's a great building. You'll love it here. We have mixers every Thursday. Geico, it's easy to switch and save on homeowners and renters insurance. Grand Park Events Center, Westfield, Indiana. Once again, your outstanding host to the Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. This one, the 2018 style, and it's Minnesota with a 1-0 lead over Nebraska. Can't wait for tonight on BTN. Penn State and Nebraska meet in a volleyball showdown. Then tomorrow, Minnesota hosts Michigan State. It's women's volleyball powered by American Ethanol. Tonight and tomorrow right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Fall weather, but pretty good weather, all things considered. Last year, it was a mess. This year, it's pretty nice. Knock on wood, and it's been nice for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. April Bakken, 12 goals, leads all players in the Big Ten, and it's the difference in the game. one nothing. Minnesota over Nebraska. The Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament on BTN, semifinal number two. Penn State already in the championship game. Minnesota leads Nebraska one to nothing through 45. Logan, everybody, great to be with you on BTN. Dean Linky along with Kate Mark Graff. And April Bakken has been great all season long. She has, but this is one that was developed on the training ground and due to scouting is the reason why she was able to score her 12th goal of the season, 10 of which have been in conference play, and it's because she was able to execute. But Nebraska, on the other side, is creating chances for Faith Carter. She has been unsuccessful at getting anything on net. But if I'm Minnesota, I'm nervous this is only a 1-0 game. Let's take a look at this spectacular goal from Bakken from Fiedler. And Fiedler, this is just a perfectly weighted ball that beats one defender. And then Bakken's touch beats the second. And her third beats Corder, who is completely out of position. But mind you, this is that ball had to be hit with the perfect amount of pace, power, and accuracy to beat Corder. Eighth assist of the season for Fiedler, 12th goal for Bakken. And this is just a defensive lapse by Minnesota. Faith Carter, excellent first touch. Nielsen, the goalkeeper, does enough to distract and disrupt this play. But Carter had more time than she thought. Could have got her right arm out, blocked the oncoming defender that was coming from the wide area, and get it on frame. That service from Ochoa was impeccable. Very much like Fiedler's pass to Bakken. What you see though is the zero shots on goal for Nebraska. But they are getting there. Look at the but look at the corner kicks. Ochoa is delivering some quality service. Someone from Nebraska needs to step up besides Faith Carter and create some opportunities and perhaps that might unleash everything. 14th meeting between these two teams. Nebraska with just a one game lead. What a season for Bakken and Fiedler. Can they advance? It's 1-0 through 45 on BTN. <music> Halftime semifinal Friday. Semifinal number two. In fact, Penn State awaiting the winner of the number seven seed, Minnesota. And Nebraska matchup with the Golden Gophers leading 1-0 spectacular seasons some Meyer outstanding performances this year our Meyer season awards Erica Dombach four times she's been named the Big Ten coach of the year what a job she did to earn it again Devin Kerr Lori Walker Hawk she was a great goalkeeper teaches great goalkeepers and then a couple Nittany Lions for defender of the year and midfielder of the year Kaylee Rio I'm a big fan of Emily Ogo Kate Markgraf you know I love Emily Ogo, and look at that, the Big Ten Forward of the Year featuring prominently in this one leads all players in goals. Megan McClellan picking right up for Casey Murphy dropped off. She'll be rocking some records at Rutgers as well. Our Meyer Season Awards. Minnesota, their fans hoping they can hang on and spend the weekend in Westfield. They lead at 1-0 at the half. The Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament on BTN. Soccer on BTN is brought to you by Discover Card, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. By Bear, proud sponsor of the Big Ten Conference, Bear, science for a better life. And by Dr. Pepper and its local Dr. Pepper bottlers, proud sponsors of the Big Ten Conference. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of fans 
and our sponsor for a look at the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament bracket. You got to play yourself into it. Only the top eight teams get there and all of those games decided on PKs or in the final two minutes of action and then Penn State knocking off Illinois earlier today. And Penn State, the better team of the two, even though they did get through on an own goal, they created so many opportunities. And this, we expect it to be an evenly matched game. And I'm looking forward to the next 45 minutes to see if Nebraska can pull this back. Don't forget the championship game Sunday, noon Eastern, right here on the Big Ten Network. Always looking forward to championship Sunday. See if Natalie Cooks, he had that bloody nose back out there. Ready to go. It's not going to be easy, though, to get one by the Minnesota Golden Gophers as we take a look at our State Farm State of Success. They are not allowing teams to score. Last time they allowed a goal, October 9, 2014, as you see the shutout streak against Nebraska. And also they're a second half team as well, which means they're able to put on a little bit of an offensive display, not allowing the other teams to get on the ball, which is contributing to that. They have a little bit of second half match, second half magic, outscoring opponents 16 to nine in the second half. So it's a huge climb for Nebraska. It's part of the reason they won four in a row, obviously, against Nebraska, that shutout streak against the Cornhuskers. One final look there at April Bakken. The senior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. 12 goals and five assists. Second half underway. Kate Markraft, Dean Linky, delighted to be with you here. Semi-final Friday. Minnesota down the right side. Olivia Brown. Cleared away. Megan Gray getting the start in the second half for Stephanie Golan. And here is Megan Gray. Freshman from Iowa. Let's see if we see any tactical changes from John Walker at the moment it's still just that one forward number six Faith Carter John Walker 25 seasons Marty Everding's been with him for 22 seasons Stephanie Golan mad respect for John Walker talking about his loyalty to the program. True Cornhusker. Heslin. Dad. So Winding's dad back at right back. Pushing forward that Albrecht back in there. Nikki Albrecht back in the game. Shot. It's Olivia Brown heading it down. This is a point of the game as well where Sinclair Miramontes, even as a center back, had the ability to take over a game, know when to make runs. The freshman Olivia Brown's probably going to stay put and just try to manage what's in front of her. Those are just, mad. you always hear that expression, big shoes to fill. I mean, those are just giant boots. And oversized. you can't hope yeah. to fill it. Like, Miramontes, you're not filling that. So then you just have to play within yourself. And then it's about the sum being greater than the parts of those people around you to replace for that. But they're not going to. But that's when other people that do have that ability to influence a game the way Mir Montez does, like a Brant, like a Carter, need to step up and capitalize on those big moments. But it might be too big of an order. 
there might be just not enough there. But Carter, we saw in that first half, through the excellent service of Ochoa, was able to create some dangerous chances and find yourself in spots. It's not due to a lack of effort, just a lack of where she was and maybe composure on the best chance that she had in the game for this game not to be at 1-1. Those are five first touch passes from Minnesota. Springing Gray down the right side. Heavy touch from Gray. Gray's effort, though, to win it back. Bakken has Gray behind her. Play it back to Olivia Brown. And you notice that Minnesota is pressuring much higher up the field because they want to prevent Carter from getting balls and getting those outlet passes up top when she's already in the box. They were dropping off and allowing Nebraska to build the ball. And now look at the front line. Now they're pressing up in the final third. And before we saw them around the midfield line in the first half. Nebraska comes into this game seventh in the Big Ten, averaging 1.4 goals per game. However, they were ninth in the conference in shot accuracy and 13th in shots per game. And that has been the difference. As you pointed out, they do have those five corner kicks. They just have not been able to put any shot on goal. bounds good opportunity to thank our stats people Ryan Kelly's done a great job all year with stats Safi Khalil here today the winner facing Penn State on championship Sunday question is does Nebraska have an equalizer Communication. She'll roll it out to Ochoa. And Vegas came flying in. If she was able to win that, it would have been on for Nebraska. Instead, Minnesota going the other way. Gray is inside the 18, awaiting. An opportunity shot from distance picked up by Bakken winding stead Nikki Albrecht you got to give Nikki Albrecht a whole lot of credit for saying she wants to get back in there it's kind of been one of those you can tell flu type day laborious for her out there she's working so hard yeah, she's laying everything out there because Minnesota does need a victory in order to improve their chances of postseason play after this. But with the nature of sickness like that, if it's anything like the sickness that all players have had at some point, is you can do it for like 15 or 20 minutes, and then you just don't have that endurance ability. It's just too much. You're so tired off of what you, usually is a normal exertion. So I get why she's back out, out there. Just be interesting to see how long she lasts, especially if U Vegas starts to get going and they start to, Nebraska is able to have the ball in their opponent's half at all, which we haven't seen yet. And yeah, you talk about Minnesota's hopes for postseason. Of course, Penn State will be in the NCAA tournament. Michael Neal's Rutgers team, incredible what they did this year. I think they played 11 games in overtime and did not lose any of them. One, I think six of them tied five or something like that. It's just amazing to not have a single tie in those overtime, or not a single loss, rather. And they look for Faith Carter. Paula Wilkins, Wisconsin Badgers, 12-3-4. and four. Those four wins over top 50 RPI teams. The Buckeyes with five of those. And as you said, coming on strong 
late in the season, which is important. They do look at that, that it is a contributing factor into how other decision makes. The committee has to decide who they want. You have to imagine Rutgers is in, Penn State is in. I want to say Janet Rayfield has returned her team. Not a given, but... She's done an incredible job this year. So Rayfield, um, Ohio State, so Illinois, Ohio State. And then on the bubble is, to me, is Minnesota and Nebraska who have to have a must win. So that's why this game is so critical for both of them, as well as Wisconsin. Seven fouls for Nebraska, your sixth seed. Three fouls for Minnesota, your seventh seed. Best opportunity of the game, the first half, Faith Carter. Great ball from Ochoa, quick whistle. Minnesota wasn't ready. Nielsen came out and just her coming out kind of forced Carter a little over to her right. She couldn't put it on frame. The fall to Fiedler. Carter backpedals. Love that look when you can see where Carter is when they get it in their offensive third. Gray, the freshman, wearing number 16, has brought a burst of energy here to start the second half for Stephanie Golan. Yeah, Golan has the privilege because they're ahead to play maybe some players that wouldn't get a ton of playing time or as much if the game was tighter or if they're coming from behind. So perhaps resting some legs, playing that game, how much should you rest, how much should you play them, and hoping that the score stands. Number door had it for a moment and lost it. Coach Golan talks quite a bit about potentially going with a 3-5-2. A lot of that had to do with the health of Nikki Albrecht, but it also reminded me of what Anson Dorrance has done over the years as she had a full line change. And, you know, North Carolina, they'll play 15 minutes and change everybody. And that's kind of what Minnesota was thinking about doing, but then Albrecht had enough and Billings came in and played in the back. And the luxury of depth, depth right there and versatility of your players, because playing in a three back puts a huge load on your center backs, your three central backs and your wing backs that have to cover up and down. That's a privilege a lot of teams would like to have is to have that much depth that they get to choose to do that. And it does wear teams down. Sliding over Emily Peterson. This great senior class, Emily Peterson, Molly Fiedler, Maddie Castro, Emily Heslin, April Bakken, all starters. This is incredible. I mean, th that is... That's very rare. I said eight months. I don't think that's eight months. It's less than eight <laughs> months. I, do my, I would not be good at that carnival, you know, where you're trying to guess when people were born... How many is that? Six months. Well, I think if you're within two, then you don't get a prize, though. Your so. standard deviation right there. You're good. You're within the range. one nothing, Minnesota looking for more. Cut back. Fiedler! So close as Corder invites those shots from distance. Just one of those players that thrives in transition moments, realizes when def defenses are out of shape and stretch both vertically and horizontally and takes advantage of that. Look at that gap in between the midfield and the back line. Just a little bit of deception move, gets Brown going the wrong way, puts it on her left foot, unable to get it on target. But you get to see the pace she can put on the ball from far away distance. So it was the right decision by Brown to step up, just need to keep her feet a little bit more and not go diving in. Three shots already for Fiedler. Kate, you know what I loved most about that opportunity right there, though, was the runs taking players away. Gray kept her run going. She didn't just sit back and watch. 
Fiedler do her thing. She continued her run, which kept her defender with her. Nomador did the same on the other side. Kept These are line. players coming off the bench. Yeah, that's just excellent tactical knowledge. It's a great call, Dean, is because what they're doing is just sacrificial runs to keep your defenders wide and create a bigger channel for which, in which Fiedler could operate in. Meanwhile, Nebraska has not had a shot in over 15 minutes. Fiedler right down the spine. She'll cross it, or angle it rather, and the flag is up. That's great, making those great runs. In this case, I would again ride the fact she's making the runs and feel her just pop it after that first touch from 40. Just optimistic that it's gonna happen, it's gonna go through. Just didn't have the patience to see that back line, the state of mind to go and look across and hold, keep herself on. But as Nebraska is trying to go ahead to find a goal, they're getting extremely stretched from back to front, which is creating those gaps. And that's why Fiedler's presence is becoming more impactful as the game is going on. I give an A-plus to Gray. She <laughs> doesn't look happy Dean's coming out. Card. But Can we build that graphic? Dean's report card. Patricia Ward coming in. Uh, Gray did her job, right? Basically, Ward started. And Stephanie Golan told Gray to give me 15 solid minutes, and that's exactly what she did. Now Ward can come in fresh. And that goes with their game plan right now, which is more offensive press to keep their backs back and to keep that ball in Nebraska's own half. Number door continues to fight. Bakken, quarter staying put. Ward just came on for Stephanie Golan. Left foot, beautiful ball, trying to find the head of Fiedler. Thirty minutes remaining in this one. Patricia Ward, freshman for freshman, as she replaces Gray. But it's been the seniors getting it done, right? April Bakken from Molly Fiedler, three minutes in. Grant. Nebraska came into this one 22 and 11 all time in conference tournament games, winning six titles. They won the Big 12 tournament in 96, 98, 99, 2000, and 2002. I remember those teams. They took home the Big 10 title in 2013. It was a big moment for Coach Walker. Ochoa, Fiedler, Ochoa staying with it, Winding Stad, Molly Fiedler, that's your attacking midfielder. But that's the right mentality you want from your veterans, because the minute that they give up or think that they have this in the bag is the minute that Nebraska climbs back into this. So her intensity, as well as the other veterans on this team, is carrying this team to come out with a second half, who I have to say is much better playing-wise than their first half, even though they got a goal in that first half. I agree. Number door, looking for Bakken. But it's still one of those games where Minnesota can start to feel pretty good about how much play they have but you look up the scoreboard it's only one nothing one little mistake or another opportunity like faith carter had in the first and this game is all tied up Bakken. 
Ward served a great ball a moment ago. Try to find the head of Fiedler. She'll earn a corner kick. Call to shift change, call it whatever you want. Stephanie Golan had a game plan even with her subs and it's it's working out. It's kept them fresh. They've been dangerous. You can eat up the clock right here. Done well here these first 15 minutes of the second half, as you just said, Kate. Bakken's going to take the corner kick. Driven in with a right foot. Transition here for the Cornhuskers. It's been over 20 minutes now for Nebraska without a shot. Savannah U Vegas, third team all Big Ten. Four ACL surgeries. Four. She has battled through eight goals and four assists. Scored the winner against Penn State early on in the Big Ten season at Penn State. That was when Coach Walker's team was a lot more healthy, though, right? And Miramontes was running the show. I was blown away by their performance at Penn State. Of course, they managed the game after they got that goal, and we've used that word bunker, but that's what you got to do sometimes on the road. Well, especially against a technical and tactical team of Penn State, you got to sit back because they're not going to play a long ball and then it's going to be a battle for first and second balls. They're going to break you down by moving you around and exploiting and creating bigger gaps of space to play in. Illinois had no intention of coming out in a bunker today, but you got to see what happened just because they're able to hold on to the ball for so long it pushes opponents all the way back into their own box and defensive third. Penn State with that win. I'd imagine probably back at the hotel. In fact, watching this one out of the elements. But this isn't the go for if the Minnesota goes through this is not the team in the style that they're going to face right now it's just a totally different game plan because of the way that Nebraska is lining up and that Nebraska is not able to build out right now all leading up to Sunday's championship game noon Eastern whistle flag is up Switching from the right to the left. Two goals and two assists for the freshman. <laughs> Emily Heslin, along with T.J. McKendrick, probably not giving T.J. McKendrick enough credit for just doing the... The dirty work alongside allowing Heslin and Fiedler to push forward more. Marissa Windingstad. You know some of these players. She's from Omaha. Mackenzie Langdock. She was a starter early in the season. Fiedler, though Choa. Shot from distance. Quarter, though, has not been as active off her line. She has stayed inside of the six here in the second half. Save number 25, Aubrey Quarter. shots for Nebraska this half and you gotta wonder when you're gonna start putting maybe a partner up there for Carter right now it's Carter all alone Brant sees Carter Carter's got to hold her line a 
just the way in which they're lined up. This is when the formation's hurting them because they don't have enough numbers around the ball to win it back. Bypass the pressure with quality on the ball, having that skill and that comfort, and then finding Carter up top. And that's been the difference. We talked about Minnesota able to spread it out and create those open lanes. You're right, Nebraska had three players running into each other there. Because the midfield has done a better job in the second half for Minnesota compared to Nebraska's midfield. They're totally winning that battle and launching play and transition from there. Once Ochoa can get on the ball and create, better things happen for Nebraska. Ochoa, good angled ball, but better defensive work by that back four for Minnesota. Emily Peterson using her body able to hold off Elise Huber. And we haven't seen Natalie Cook, the player that went out for Nebraska, the Canadian International. And we get to see the ball to Huber, letting the ball travel, using the momentum. But Peterson, excellent defensive positioning, use her body to shield the ball out of danger. But we haven't seen Cook back in. She's the one who got the bloody nose after heading the head of her teammates. So that's another player that they've been down that was coming in and getting significant playing time due to all the injuries. Pressure from Minnesota leads to a turnover. Still just one nothing, but make no mistake, Minnesota did not sit on it. They came out with a solid game plan, and as Kate, as you talked about, their second half performance has been better than their first half performance. Now we'll see if John Walker has an answer here with under 20 minutes remaining. Grand Park Sports Campus, once again, your host to the women's and men's semifinals and finals. The men will be out here next weekend. Really like the quick touches of Minnesota here in the second half. Multiple players. Getting in on the action, moving the ball up the field. Winding stead, as I say that, one too many touches. Let's see what Nebraska can do on a counter. T.J. McKendrick wearing that number five jersey. Fiedler. Bakken. Bakken trying to curve one in. Fiedler to Bakken has been a familiar theme. Eight assists and five of them to Bakken this year. And Bakken not on the back line, pulling herself out, realizing that's where the space is. This time her touch gets too far away from her as she slices the ball. Their foot too far inside, but no pressure on the width. And this is where... Nebraska is losing the game to me, is on the wide parts. They have no pressure or presence. Quarter, quarter coming out of her line there. She has been much more calm on there, much, more, much better decision making on how high she's going to play because she has to because Minnesota has been playing in their end so much. But we said Uvegas' name so much on that right-hand side in that first half, creating play. Meg Brandt was coming out there. We haven't seen Nebraska be able to stage any sort of the attack out here, and that's part of the reason why they're not able to generate anything going forward. Yeah, it's now 30-plus minutes without a shot for Nebraska, and 
You Vegas went to the bench for not only a break, but I'm guessing some final tactical plans. When she comes back in, Kate, we'll take a look at the shape because you're right, you Vegas is a key player for Nebraska if they want to try to get that tying goal. Maddie Nielsen, sophomore. Ward. Boy, her confidence from that first game against Stanford to now night and day. Ward. This Minnesota team took Stanford into overtime at Minnesota. For Stanford, who's going to beat Stanford? <laughs> Nobody so far. Jeez. Especially with Tyrion Davidson. She was out, which made Stanford a little bit more vulnerable after a nasty tackle from a Carolina player that I thought should have just been like, okay, you just can't play anymore in the season. You're just dirty. That was disgusting. But Minnesota was able to stay with them, build some confidence, had some hiccups along the way. Bakken. Quarter. Right hand. A little cut back. Down. Loose. In front quarter with a big save. Turning on it was Ward. Minnesota dangerous, but it's still just one nothing. So watch whether or not Ward is offside. You have players on Nebraska sitting on the post that should be advancing off of it. I think... She's held onside on that one by Brown, not able to get up. Good work from Langdock, number two for Minnesota in that last flurry. But the reason why Minnesota got better is because of that partnership and the emergence of April Bakken becoming the main goal scorer. She ended up leading the Big Ten in every single offensive category. Now has 12 goals, eight of which, nine of which, have come in conference play. But her confidence that started to build within the Big Ten play is the reason why Minnesota is here now. Soccer on BTN is brought to you by Discover Card, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. By Bear, proud sponsor of the Big Ten Conference, Bear Science for a Better Life, and by Dr. Pepper and its local Dr. Pepper Bottlers, proud sponsors of the Big Ten Conference, Dr. Pepper, the official drink of fans. Grand Park Event Center, once again, your host to the Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament. It was that facility that pretty much saved the day a year ago. The weather was just ridiculous. Wind, rain, <laughs> everything. It was awesome. It was Midwest weather. But it was impossible to play, and it was in fact impacting the game so much. Northwestern and Penn State battled it out in the finals. It being inside to finish off the game. Nikki, They're hoping Sunday's not like that. Nikki Albrecht. Not feeling well. It's going to come out of the game. So we'll see how Minnesota will change tactically. But it's going to be about Nebraska searching for the equalizer and really searching for just a shot on frame. What I love in that last shot is you get to see the seniors leading that conversation in the huddle and you can see them motioning how they want the play how they want the ball where the gaps are and after calling these games and seeing these players as freshmen quiet being the quiet ones watching the seniors talk in the huddles in those key pivotal moments or during the breaks due to injury it's fun to watch that it's their time, isn't it? Coach Kalan talking a lot about the pride she has in this senior class. They're all starters, all of them. Even a player who came back in six months from an ACL. It's unheard of. At this level, Ochoa. Ochoa, did she earn a corner kick? And here you go. 
All it takes is one corner. It'll show us had a lot of them. To be taken by number 28, Ochoa. Five corner kicks in the first half. This is the first one for Ochoa in the second. Vegas is back in there. You knew she would be. Brown has also come forward. They try to find Brown over her head. Not a good clearance by Minnesota. It's still loose. Nielsen was out and really out of position. Brant still loose. And Minnesota lucky it's not 1-1 right there. And I think only if the freshman Brown, Olivia Brown would have just taken a shot on that. She had the best chance. But as a freshman center back, she gets the ball and she she takes one touch, two touches, and quickly passes it to Meg Brandt. Imagine the opportunity she could have had had she tried that on goal. Because she's the only one facing that with nobody on her immediately. Yeah, I can't wait to see that again at the opportunity because it was basically like a duff from Minnesota. A missed clearance, not on purpose, but it went off the wrong angle, I think, of a Minnesota player's head. Yeah, she headed it backwards for her own goal. Yeah. Let's take a look at it right now. So an excellent far post ball and just poorly cleared. And it bounced out. And here's the ball that I'm talking about. It goes straight to her one. Two, three, she hits it wide instead of just trying to get something on that, perhaps aided by a deflection. But TJ McKendrick, the midfield junior from Minnesota, she closed her eyes to me at that last second, kind of turtlenecked it on that clear, and it hit off the wrong side of her head and went back towards her own net, keeping it alive. Good call on Brown as well. Just hit it, right? Because it could deflect off one of those players in front. That's such a freshman move, though. If someone's going to do that, that's a freshman or a defender or both. Vegas plays it forward. It's still just one nothing. You can never relax if you don't get that closing goal. Here is the freshman, Brown. Ochoa. Ochoa and Uvegas. Bakken, she's got the only goal of the game. It came in the third minute. Great through ball from Fiedler. Bakken new quarter was off her line. As Nielsen pings it to midfield. A little flick there from McKendrick. Quarter homeschooled in West Virginia, the junior. Fiedler, Bakken to her right. Bakken doesn't need a whole lot of room to take a shot, but falling back, not on frame. The shot for Minnesota by number 20, April Bakken. Substitution for Minnesota, number 17, Selena Big Ten Ford of the Year, April Bakken. Just a couple years removed from Simone Colander from winning that same award. A lot of great center forwards have played for Stephanie Golan in her short time at Minnesota. Nielsen comes way out. One more touch from Nebraska, and they're in. And Natalie Cook's back in, the one who got the bloody nose in the first half, as well as Faith Carter. Nebraska's putting in all their top offensive tools trying to get the equalizer. Long ball. Off the head. Again, not the best clearance. Someone's got to take a shot. Falling back. No problem for Nielsen as Kenzie Coons had a better opportunity 
earlier than that the shot. The number 10, Kenzie Coons. Save number one, Maddie Nielsen. Well, Kenzie Coons is able to capitalize on a poor clear by Minnesota. It goes back to her. One touch, two touch, three touch. Able to separate off balance. Nielsen, easy to collect it for her and start the attack the other way. Selena Nummerdor did just enough to stop Coons from getting any real mustard on that shot as this will come all the way back two quarters. She'll let it roll out of bounds. Eight minutes remaining perhaps in the Nebraska season here. And you really feel like if not for the injury bug, Nine, six, and five, five, three, and three coming in. A big win over the Penn State Nittany Lions. I feel like if they stayed healthy, they would also be in the NCAA tournament, but just four starters out with injuries. And then having the four freshmen come in for them, that's to me the big thing. It's different if you have a sophomore coming in and helping out but when it's just that sheer number and that was not your anticipated lineup, these weren't four freshmen that were ready to start. But that'll pay dividends down the road as much as that stinks in the current situation if you're them. In the future, those players are better off because they got so much experience this season. Nebraska's got a shot. They have two wins against top 25 teams. They beat NC State and Penn State and seven against top 50 teams. Those are pretty good numbers. But you know what? I mean, Coach Walker wasn't talking about any of that. He's like, the only thing I know is we got to win the tournament, yep. <laughs> right, to keep going. He had the right mindset. All of them do. Or at least they say the right things to us, but that's how you have to pin it to your team because then it becomes about the moment. It becomes about right now and keeps the focus on where it needs to be. It's about executing the game plan rather than trying to get in the what-if scenario because you can't control that. The only thing you can control if you get in or not is if you win this tournament. I will say upon further review, I like their story. The problem is they do keep track of those injuries as well. The trend. Yeah. There's six minutes remaining. I think they're absolutely on the bubble. Maybe not on the right side of the bubble, but they are on the bubble, so you never know what can happen. Shoa trying to come out of it. The foul doesn't get it. Cornhuskers into the box. Almost an own goal. Cleared off the line. It only takes that one little opportunity and getting it done right there for Nebraska. Teresa Pujato almost drawing an own goal. And it's the cross here. It's the defender going backwards. Peterson not able to pick her foot up. Instead, does the shin. The shin touch, which is always unpredictable on where that's gonna go, but she was able to get something on it and get her body around it. If she'd been any closer to a goal, that would've been very tough to recover from. And how about that senior composure? Didn't panic after that rough touch. Got herself together as Nielsen was kinda out of position again. Ochoa set in, Nielsen will punch that out. Brown. Kept alive, second ball. You can hear the Nebraska coaching staff. Second ball. Positive influence on the bench. Oh, that is such a card the referee totally just missed. 
Ochoa. Three twenty. Ward. Somehow that came back and went off of Ward. Nebraska. And a battle to the very end here. Less than three minutes remaining. Vegas over there. Good work, Winding Stead. So for two minutes remaining, Minnesota gonna try to cement it right here, and they do it. The Minnesota Golden Gophers one nothing for so long. April Bakken has been incredible all season long. And April Bakken has done it again. If you allow Bakken to run at you and allow her to face the goal, she has the ability to shoot in a variety of different ways to test and exploit every single goalkeeper's positioning when they are out of position. This is just off a throw-in. And it's a half-chance ball that's flicked on. Number but door. look at this, Numador. And then look at that. It's that first touch, six yards, beats one defender. Second touch, closes down the space, forces Corridor to come out. Look how calm she is. She keeps her head down. She knows Corridor's coming out. She knows exactly where she wants to go with that ball. Corridor did get a hand on it, but then again, there's too much pace on it. And that composure is amazing. Great composure, and it's her fourth multi-goal game this season. The Big Ten Conference Forward of the Year. Goal number 12 and 13. And that was the insurance goal that now in Minnesota can take a big, deep breath. That's me very tough climb for Nebraska to score two goals in the remaining minutes of the game. So Minnesota, a little over 60 seconds from Moving on to a Sunday championship date with the regular season winners, Penn State Nittany Lions. Obviously, if you listened over the last couple years, Stephanie Golan has had that mantra of take the stairs. And they're going to take it right to the championship game, the Minnesota golden gophers that mentality she's sticking by it she believes in it it's been a little contagious around the big 10 network office and it works for this team they're right back in a good spot it's just a mentality to always do the hard work even if the easy route is more available to you and that it will be an advantage in the end when needed because you've built those strategies to learn how to overcome challenges early on in the season Bakken has scored a goal in six of the last seven games. The one team that she didn't score against, Penn State. Shot from distance, handled by Nielsen. But April Bakken will have a chance to change that. It's going to be Penn State and Minnesota Sunday, noon Eastern, and the championship game. Two goals from the Big Ten Forward of the Year. 2-0 Minnesota over Nebraska. Well, it seems only right that Penn State is in the finals after what they've been able to do, and they're the highest scoring team in the Big Ten. But then to have the all-time Big Ten 
Offensive Player of the Year, trying to take them down, facing up on Sunday. Minnesota Penn State is a meeting of the last three tournament champions. Penn State won it last year in 2015. Minnesota won it in 2000. 16, obviously making it their second championship game appearance in the last three seasons. This senior class, special indeed for Stephanie Golan. And the senior class knew that the, a win would improve their chances of getting into the NCAA tournament, and they delivered. They executed the game plan perfectly, knew some of the weaknesses in Nebraska, and punished them right from the get-go, and then was able to get the insurance goal. Put our focus on the Dr. Pepper tournament look Penn State your regular season champions sit in the championship game after a one nothing win over Illinois and Minnesota has done it big win at Rutgers and now over the Cornhuskers at first it was an upset against Rutgers and then they go on and now they're able to beat an evenly matched at least standings wise against Nebraska but they were definitely the better team of today and now they get a chance to take down Penn State April Bakken, big smile and well deserved. Our final score here in semifinal number two, Minnesota two, Nebraska zero. Be sure to join us on Sunday for the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Championship at noon Eastern. Coming up next, it's Iowa Michigan field hockey semifinals. Dan Kelly on the call for Billy Proctor and his great staff, Kate Markgraf. Our entire crew, I'm Dean Linke, saying so long from Grand Park. We'll see you on Sunday for Penn State and Minnesota in the final.